boys and girls, it's Miss Rochella, and this week we talked a lot about the circus, and I'm going to read Fandy Circus to you, which is about Alexander Calder. So he was an artist, and he made some really cool art, but we're going to read the story, and we're going to figure out what to make afterwards, and have some fun. Okay, so give me five. Number one, legs are crossed. Number two, hands are still. Number three, ears are listening. Number four, eyes are watching. And number five, we're going to zip it, lock it, and put it in our pocket. This is the artist Alexander Calder unpacking his circus suitcases. Alexander Calder was one of the most important American artists of the 20th century, and his circus was one of his most important works. The man invented the mobile, a whimsical sculpture artfully designed to move as freely as the air or wind lets it. It's a form we now take for granted, yet even the mobiles that hung over our cribs when we were babies would not exist without Calder. One of his first creations was a wonderful, whimsical circus that he made out of found materials such as wire, cork, and paper. I'm going to read a story that imagines how it all began. Sandy's Circus, a story about Alexander Calder by Tanya Lee Stone and illustrated by Boris Kulikov. There was once an artist named Alexander Calder, only he didn't call himself Alexander, and he didn't call the things he made art. Everyone called him Sandy. He had been making his objects since he was a kid. Sandy's mother was a painter. His father was a sculptor. Even though they moved from Pennsylvania to Arizona to California to New York and back to California, his parents always made sure Sandy had a workshop and tools. He made his friends toys and jewelry from scraps of wood, leather, and wire he would pick up off the street. Sandy built his sister Peggy a castle for her doll, complete with a moat, and he and Peggy made toy animals and played circus in the workshop. Even though Sandy loved creating things, he didn't always want to be an artist. He went to college and learned more about making things by studying to be an engineer. Sandy had different jobs, but never really liked any of them. Then he worked as a fireman in the boiler room of a ship. One night, he was sleeping up on deck, sailing between San Francisco and New York. When he woke, he was awestruck. On one side of the ship was a fiery red sunrise. On the other, the full moon shone like a silver coin. The sight made Sandy want to go to art school, and he did. Artists need to work. A newspaper hired Sandy to draw the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. For two weeks, day and night, he went to the stadium, drawing as many different parts of the circus as he could. He loved sketching the elephants, the flying trapeze, the lion tamer, and the dancers. Sandy sat in different parts of the theater to see from up high, down low, off to the side. The next year, 1926, he decided to go to Paris. Why Paris? Because that city was alive with art. And Sandy said, in Paris, it's a compliment to be called crazy. Sandy rode through the streets of Paris on his orange bicycle. He carried a roll of wire around his shoulder and a pair of pliers in his pocket. When Sandy bumped into a friend, out came the wire and the pliers. He would twist and bend and curl while he chatted and before they said adieu, Sandy would give his friend a gift, voila, a portrait of the person made of wire. One day, Sandy made a little wire lion. He built a colorful cage for the lion, 
Of course, since the lion was a wild animal, it needed a tamer. So Sandy made him too. Then he made the high wire walkers and a high wire for them to walk on, and a safety net in case they should fall, and a flying trapeze, and a red stage. Sandy started to see a whole circus come to life before his eyes. Then he really got going. His huge hands worked with tiny pieces of wire, cork, cloth, buttons, yarn, string, leather, paper, and bits of wood. He twisted and shaped and curled and cut and curved until... Sandy was ready to put on a big top circus show. His circus filled two suitcases. Click, click. Sandy set up the stage with his animals and performers wherever and whenever he could. He went back and forth, back and forth, from Paris to New York, those suitcases always along for the ride. During one stay in New York, Sandy made more animals and acrobats. His circus grew to fill five suitcases. When it was showtime, out came the suitcases. Click, 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 click. A friend wound up the gramophone to start the music. Sandy boomed a greeting to his audience in the voice of his wire ringmaster, Monsieur Loyal announcing the performance was about to begin. On his knees, this bear of a man worked the springs and strings and levers of his clever creations, making them leap, run, and dance. Hear the whistle blow, horns blare, see the flying flippolinis flip, the lion roars, the lion tamer tames, seals bark, tossing a ball from nose to nose. Rigolo, the strong man, bends to his toes and raises a huge barbell high above his head, showing off for his beloved bearded lady. Horses gallop, birds flutter, dogs dance on whirly, twirly legs. Cavito the clown plays tricks on his fellow performers. He dangerously distracts the axe thrower just as he hurls his axe at the wire girl. Oh no, injury under the big top. But never fear, help is on the way. Sirens wail. Two wire rescue workers race in to carry the girl off on a teeny tiny stretcher. Sometimes the show went on for hours. There were chariot races and bucking broncos, a belly dancer, camel, and kangaroo. Sandy crawled around on his hands and knees, arranging his wire animals and circus folk, setting them in motion to perform for the crowd. After the grand finale, he brought them all back for a bow. Encore! Encore! The crowd laughed and clapped and cheered for more. Word spread through Paris and New York. Everyone wanted to see Sandy's circus. They loved how full of joy and fun it was. They loved how Sandy's work was always in motion. People said, He has discovered in playing a new world. His art has the force of the ocean. Sandy delighted in crafting things that moved. He made new kinds of art, hanging his shapes up, connecting pieces to each other with wire, and letting the air drift and spin them into motion. In doing so, he turned ordinary objects into extraordinary art and invented the very first mobiles. And it all started with Sandy's magical, movable circus. Now, let's try to be like a young Sandy Calder and make our own circus with things we might find around our homes. When I was a kid, I loved making shapes out of my mother's long chain necklace. If you can find one, try to make the shape of an elephant. and use a button for an eye. Speaking of buttons, you'll always find spare ones around the home in all different colors and sizes. These are great to make a clown with. Use two small buttons for eyes, one for a nose, and a large one for the mouth. Arrange them on a piece of paper, then draw spirals for curly clown hair. Then draw a U shape to connect the hair and make the chin, soft curves for a bib around the neck, arms, the rest of the body, and maybe some stripes.
This is my favorite circus character and uses twist ties, bag ties, buttons, paper clips, and maybe a chopstick or two. First, you take one twist tie and bend it in half. Insert the bag tie in the crook of the folded twist tie and then twist the legs of the twist tie around the bottom of the bag tie. This is the body and legs. Take a second twist tie and insert the ends into the holes of a button. Pull the ends of the twist tie all the way through and then twist the ends to secure the button in place. This is the head and arms of the trapeze artist. Place the head and arms on top of the body and twist the arms around the body. Fold the ends of the arms to create hands. Attach a pair of paper clips together. Then attach it to the hand of the trapeze artist. Repeat on the other side. Then take a chopstick and loop it through the ends of the paper clips. And get ready for your trapeze artist to fly. And if possible, make a friend. Okay, crocodiles aren't quite circus animals, but they sure are a lot of fun to make. All you need is a clothespin and a pen. On the side of a clothespin, draw teeth and eyes, and you're pretty much ready to roll. Okay, boys and girls, until next time, mwah.